Hello, welcome to this class on American, the American Revolution. And so during this class, we're going to look at key events of the American Revolution and key people. Now, realize that the American Revolution went from 1775 all the way up until 1781. So there's way more people than I can ever talk about in one short class and many more events than I can talk about. But we're, we're going to look at are key events, what we call turning points, right? Where there was definitely a change, a change in the revolution, whether for one side or one group, right? And another thing we're going to do is we're going to use these stamps from the U.S. Postal Service that have been created over different years to commemorate events of the American Revolution. And so this stamp was actually created in 1925 to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the Battle at Lexington and Concord. Actually, it was two battles at Lexington and Concord. And we'll use some of what's on the stamp to talk about it. And I love when I can bring in something that's relevant in the past and present to show you. And so thank you, Postal Service, because we're going to be using a lot of the stamps to highlight the key events. So one big question that we're going to always be thinking about is how were a bunch of American colonists who were mainly farmers and businessmen able to become an independent nation? And one thing that we need to think about is that the British military at this point in history, in the late 1700s, was one of the strongest militaries in the world. England was a world power. So these colonists who don't have their own military who don't have a leader are able to go out and fight against a world superpower. They didn't have a Navy. They don't have trained soldiers. They have local militia to guard their towns from basically people that they're worried about invading, what they would have called savages, what today we would say were Native Americans. Um, also, depending on where they live, they might have been protecting themselves from foreigners such as the French up towards Maine and uh, what we call Massachusetts, New England, and from the Spanish on the borders of Georgia. Also some of the French along what we call the Ohio River Valley, and that's going to become a key part of the American Revolution. But before we can talk about battles and major events, we have to look at why did it happen, right? We have to look to the causes. So in the first week, we're going to talk mainly about the battles of Lexington and Concord, which are two separate battles, and the Battle of Bunker's Hill or Breed's Hill. All right, we will talk about some of the people, the nations involved, and the overall effects. So when we're learning history, there's a few different things that we're going to always be looking at. One, we're going to describe the event, right? If we just read this sentence, we see that the American Revolution is being, uh, defined as a rebellion. And who were they rebelling against? They were rebelling against the British government. Well, who, right? Who was rebelling? The 13 colonies of North America. Might not seem that important to you if you live in what's now the United States. But one thing that we need to consider is that Britain had many colonies at this point in the late 1700s. They had many colonies in the Caribbean that were part of the considered part of the Americas, right? They had colonies in Asia. They had colonies or trading posts in Africa. And so the British government was far and wide at this point. And so it's very specific to talk about just the 13 colonies in North America. And that's describing. We also can sequence the American Revolution. We can say, when did it start? What were some battles in between and how did it end? And so each week we're going to go back and review what happened in the weeks or months prior and then where are we now and then we'll talk about what's going to happen next. Cause and effect, history, rebellions, re revolutions are always a story of cause and effect. Here we read about the battles of Lexington and Concord that began the American Revolution. All right, so that's the effect. The effect is that these two battles began the revolution. But what caused them to happen, right? Why did those battles happen? So we need to understand that. And that's where it's almost like a domino. We understand one reason something happened, 
and then what it did, what were the changes it made. And then because of those changes, something else had happened. We also want to always look at economics, right? And so when we look at the cause for a lot of things, economics comes into it. And when we look at why wars are fought, sometimes economics is a part of it. And so one of the leading causes of the American Revolution was actually another war that Britain had fought that ended in 1763. So that's 12 years before the American Revolution starts. But we're going to look at the effects of the French and Indian War. So the overall effect is that Britain won. Yay, hurrah! right? Or huzzah, as the British would say. But another effect is it was extremely costly and it doubles the British debt, right? The government debt, 133 million pounds in 1763, huge, huge amount of debt. So how do you pay for that? How do governments pay for what they want? How do governments pay for anything? They pay with taxes which means the citizens will pay, right? And so we can look here and look at how, uh, let's say I need to move my head. Let me pause. All right, I can't move my head, so I'll have to stay here, right? We look at the change here from before the French and Indian War to after the French and Indian War, all right? And so all the pink area is land that is now claimed by the British, we see that the French have lost, okay? In fact, Louisiana is now controlled by Spain for a short time, okay? As is Florida. I'm covering up Florida, but uh, Florida is still considered Spanish territory at this point. So the 13 British American colonies have borders. There's actually some borders that have been drawn. Now, for the most part, they're geographic borders. Okay, if we look at that little thin white line on the map to the left, and it would be the red line on the map on the right, that is going to be the Appalachian Mountains. Right? And then if we go all the way north, we'll be looking at the St. Lawrence River. So typically countries conveniently divide based on geography. We also see that where uh, the line, the pink ends, and you start to see the green, that's the Mississippi River. So again, another natural geographic border. All right, so let's look at cause and effect. French and Indian War happens, large debt from the war. The King of England makes a proclamation, which is basically a law, because the English version of law is going to be act, okay? So the Proclamation Act of 1763, we have to go back 